Tiraspol, the capital of Transnistria. This province is a theater of sovereignty conflict. Transnistria has a population of around half a million, living between pro-Western Moldova and Ukraine. Proclaiming itself a republic in 1990, after seceding from Moldova, which is one of Europe's poorest countries, last month Transnistria asked to join the Russian Federation. A few days ago, its parliament formally asked Russia to recognize it as independent. President Putin, flush from his recent annexation of Crimea in Ukraine, responded, the people are indeed very pro-Russian. A large number of Russian citizens live in Transnistria. People have their own understanding of how they should build their future, their fate. And that is nothing but a manifestation of democracy if we allow those people to do what they want. The breakaway statelet has never been internationally recognized except by South Ossetia and Abkhazia, which are themselves self-declared breakaway statelets. Transnistria's ethnic groups are 32% Moldovan, 30% Russian and 29% Ukrainian. Fighting in the wake of the disintegration of the Soviet Union left some 2,000 dead in 1992. The Transnistrians got support from former Soviet troops against Moldovan forces. The Moldovans have not controlled the landlocked strip adjacent to Ukraine since then. Russia promised to remain neutral if the enclave was given autonomy, but it kept troops there. A plebiscite in 2006 registered 97% in favor of attachment to Russia. If that happened, Russia would not be neutral any longer. The European Union is deeply concerned over further east-west clashing, Romania pleading for a stronger deployment of NATO forces in Eastern Europe. Moldova signed a trade accord with the EU last November. Ousted President Yanukovych attended that EU summit without signing an accord for the Ukrainians. Afterwards, the Russian Deputy Prime Minister suggested Moldova's train to Europe will lose its carriages in Transnistria. Many fear Moscow is keenly tempted to sabotage it.